Hello, shalom, and God richly bless you. It is um, 1 p.m. BST, 1 p.m. 1 BST, British summer time. Summer is going to be over on the 21st. We're still in summer, and summer is a season of salvation. On the second day of this new season called September, the word of the Lord came to me expressly saying, victory, victory, victory pronounce victory upon my people and so my dear brother my dear sister as you saw the poster that i put on fb it says the arrow of the lord's victory when you see victory and you see arrow what comes into your mind is battle does it mean that you have to go and fight no yours is to appropriate of that kind of victory that God is pronouncing upon you. And so in this season, we're going to appropriate the victory that God is pronouncing upon us. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm excited. I can't believe I looked at today's date and it's uh, the 11th of September. So I've not preached on, on FB from the first and 10 days has passed. My God, my God, my God. That is why I'm excited. Anytime God prompts me to come and preach, it is, it is an honor for me. And it is a covering when you read the book of Ephesians chapter 6. It says that, and shorten your feet with the preparation of the spreading of the gospel. And so preaching the gospel is an armory. It is one of the Christian armories that is given in Ephesians chapter 6. If a Christian doesn't want to live their life bare, if they don't want to walk distortedly, if they don't want the enemy to control their destiny, one of the ways to protect their destiny, when we talk about the feet, it has to do with your walk, your way of life, your destiny. And God says that when you shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, when you preach the gospel, your destiny is preserved. I pray your destiny will be preserved in this season. The Bible declares in Job chapter 13 verse 14, it says that, and God begins, he says, God invents, he begins, he brings to pass all that concerns me. And many of said things are with him. This is my, my power part scripture that keeps me going every day when the sun rises. I know I've got a destiny maker. That is why I wrote a book titled The Destiny Maker. And I have a good news for you. Woo! I'm launching another book on the 23rd of um on the, on the 23rd of september so next two weeks another saturday the next saturday that is coming please join me at milan and come and taste of the fresh oil fresh oil the promise of god is that he says he's going to raise new uh um new new breed of of generals god is going to raise uh he's going to anoint and raise and send out a new breed of people amen that he himself has prepared for that season and the title of my book is tabitha kumi what the enemy the weapon the enemy was using to kill me is the same weapon that god has given me to birth this book and it is the story is just like the goliath who goes against david with his sword and his weapon someone is always already watching some people are already watching i'm excited i'm excited because we don't usually hear good news everywhere we switch on the radio we switch on the tv we pass through the office we pass through the street it is like this is a season horrible season that people are being carried away by the flood and yesterday whilst i was studying the scripture that God is giving me to present today, I was surprised that God has spoken at the beginning of the month about what was happening in the world. But as for we who have found refuge under the shadow of the Almighty, ye kapo alosi kapa ayande, we will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Yea, a thousand will fall by our side, ten thousand by our right. And ye now, it is not just big words. This is God's own word. Psalm 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we will say of the Lord, He is our refuge. Say, God is my refuge. God is my fortress. 
God is my strength in time of trouble and at the present help in time of need. God will help me early in the morning. I prophesy help upon you. I prophesy help upon you. I prophesy help to you. May God raise helpers for you. May God raise one of the horrible weapons of Satan is that when he hits you, he also makes sure to take away helpers from you. But in this season, God is pronouncing victory. And wherever your helpers are, may the Holy Ghost fire bring them out of their cave in the matchless name of Jesus. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. This is the song from Todd Dowley who says, Victory belongs to Jesus and victory belongs to you. I've come to pronounce victory unto you. And um, it's just on my heart to read various scriptures that speaks about victory to my listeners. And the word of the Lord that came to me said, whoever will sit at the sound of my voice, surely they would go there. They would enjoy victory in this season. What is September? September is the ninth month in the Gregorian calendar. But before the Gregorian calendar, the Romans had their calendar. And September was the seventh month. Sete, septimo, sete means seven. Seventh month. And seven is a powerful scripture geometria. Gem scripture geometria is Bible numbers with meanings. And so seven as all most Christians know is the number of perfection. God is going to perfect all that concerns you, all that you couldn't perfect on your own. There is this song which says, I tried without my own strength, but I could not perfect it. Yes, we cannot perfect it. It is God that perfects all that concerns us. Do you know why we cannot com 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 perfect all that concerns us? Because humans to err is human. Human came out of a corruptible uh, bread pan. And so the Bible says from Romans chapter 5, that is why it is funny when I see some people who live like angels, want us to believe that they are sinless, they are angels. You have to understand that it is the power of Christ who died for us that gives us victory over sin. And so the word of God declares in Romans chapter 7 that sin shall not have dominion over us because we are un not under the law. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57, one of the victories that God pronounced at Calvary for you and I was victory over sin, victory over guilt, victory over death. These three weapons of Satan were stripped from him. And so when you become a born again Christian, you live a sinless life, not because you are without sin, but because Jesus Christ. So the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, if we say we have no sin, we call ourselves alive. Look at some people when you see them in church, as if they just fell from heaven. Like, like you may deceive some. But not me. You may deceive those of the circumcision, but we are not of the circumcision. We who have been saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, who are carried daily by the Spirit of the Lord, who leads us not into temptation, who delivers us from evil. May God deliver you from every evil that the enemy has. Um, aguato, aguato. How do you say it in English? Has, has a. Uh, um, has formed in the womb of wickedness to spark it at a time-sensitive day. It shall not happen. It shall not happen. It shall not happen because victory is our portion. Victory is our portion. Can you sing this hymn with me? It is a hymn that we all know. And the hymn, songs, of, songs are also weapons of war. So we're going to sing this song to declare our victory in this season. That God has given us. Amen. Amen. He says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross. Sometimes our believers behave as if they are not soldiers of the cross. So. <laughs> and it is dangerous to live a Christian life not as a soldier of the cross. Shall we sing? Hallelujah. I want you to brace yourself. It is not over until Jesus says it is over. It is a new season. A season of fresh oil, a season of new beginning, a season of a new foundation in the name of Jesus. Seven is perfection. Nine is the time of birth. September is the ninth month. 
birth and breakthrough, new things. September is a new season. It's the time people start school, people come from vacation. It is also on the Jewish ecclesiastical calendar, the Hebraic uh, civil year, Tishrei. And the word means top. It is called the top of the year by the Jews, the beginning of the year where the Yom Kippur and the major festivals of the Jews the Feast of Atonement are held. It is not an easy month. It is a month that lays the foundation for the rest of your year. We talk about December, but God talks about September in the ecclesiastical calendar. To Siri, a sorrow talk. That is what this month is for us in the name of Jesus. I want us to sing this song. I want us to sing this hymn, and it is not coming. Because it's a weapon. Music is a weapon. If you read the book of Isaiah, he says, at the sound of the tambourine, God will lay a blow on the jaws of your enemy. Let's sing. Stand up for Jesus. The cross lifts up his royal banner. It must not suffer, Lord, from victory. From victory on to victory, his army shall he lead. He told her before his vanquish, and Christ is Lord indeed. Did you hear it? So every foe is vanquished, Christ will be Lord indeed. A prophetic word for this season came to me on the second day of the month of September, the month of breakthrough, the month of a new season. And God said, pronounce victory upon my people. And the word of the Lord came to me from the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Please, if you have your Bible, you take it and you read it with me because reading the scripture is a weapon. It is called a spiritual arrow spiritual arrow that is why in ephesians chapter 6 paul talks about also praying with all kinds of prayer when you pray in the realms of the spirit it is like you are throwing arrows that is what we are going to see in this month even as the lord will grace me with the sermon title the arrow of the lord's deliverance and some bible puts victory and i chose victory because that is the prophetic word the lord gave me actually the word deliverance there means salvation it means victory. It means healing. It means breakthrough. It means all that Jesus died on the cross to give us. It means Yeshua, Jesus' his name. It is the season that Jesus will manifest his goodness, his grace, his victory to us. And so when we read 2 Corinthians chapter 2 Corinthians chapter let's read second corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 i know how to rehearse it but i choose to read the scripture he says but thanks be to god who always <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. who on monday who on tuesday who on wednesday who on thursday who on friday who on saturday who in the morning season, who in the afternoon season, who in the evening season, who in the midnight hour, who at the dawn gives us victory. I pronounce victory upon you in the morning, in the noontime, in the night hour, 24 by 7. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Jesus Christ leads us in triumph a capote levrodi lavade. Listen to what the New Living Translation is saying. But thank God, he has made us captive and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphant procession. If that English is too big, let's go to the God's word version. He says, I thank God. Do people know this? Paul is assessing, assessing, confirming that he knows that God always you say St. Paul. Are you not the one that was beaten? Are you not the one that was nearly beaten to death, put in a basket, thrown over a wall? You. And you're talking about victory. St. Paul. Are you, <coughs> are you not the one who said you have been given a thorn in your flesh and you are talking about victory? St. Paul. Are you not the one who said you are oppressed but not crushed? 
persecuted, not abandoned. You see that the definition of God's victory is not man's victory. But everybody knows that when you mention about victory, the definition of victory, when you go on Google, he says, <coughs> let's see, because I have it here. When you Google victory, because he says triumphant victory, so just, just have a minute with me and let's Google victory and let's see the definition of victory. When you talk about victory, you can't talk about victory without talking about a battle. There are some Christians who never had a battle. Everything is well with them. Everyone is nice with them. <laughs> and I look at them and say, which kind of Christian be this one? Even Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And the scripture says, no man can be above their master. Jesus, up to now, is a controversial figure. Christianity, up to now, is hated by people. There are some places you better don't say you are a Christian. Or else you're, you'll be forfeited the job. You will be forfeited the niceties of life. Christianity is not a, 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 a religion, a core mother. It, it is not core. So what kind of Christian are you? Every pastor is, every pastor likes you. Every member likes you. Everyone speaks good about you. You are a hypocrite and a liar. It means you are a numan kokone. You are like the uh, lizard that turns green this side turns yellow this side. But to whoever is going through persecution for righteousness sake, but to whoever that is going through contention for the sake of the gospel, for to whoever that is having challenges in ministry, in marriage, in the battlefield, be it your workplace, be it the realms of the spirit, be it territorial, I have come to pronounce victory upon you. Man kampan to adolescence De kola kuda zulam pronti firian talamante. Azele gadori haba halavante. I didn't come to speak to everyone. I came to speak to some people that are having challenges. Men koto long fun to yaderi yaba. Sometimes your battle is not because even because of you. But some ministers you have associated with. There are some people who have gone through battles not because of them. But because of me. And God preserved them and God brought them out. I give God thanks. One of my members was operated yesterday. What medics said, it was impossible. She was uh, uh, released from the hospital yesterday. We serve a God who fights our battle for us. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to the end. Because in times of battle, you are tempted to deny Jesus Christ. I remember I ordained a woman and a group of pastors called they couldn't come to me directly so they started charging another apostle that had worked with me accusing him that he had no right to um ordain that woman and this apostle called me and he said you know let's remove the photo from facebook and let's say that we didn't ordain her and let's arrange for a proper ordination where we we'll invite all these men of god i said would i obey man instead of god god said that woman had to be ordained we have done what god said and it became a rabble rouser. I am a rabble rouser, I know. Because Jesus is a rabble rouser. And so I didn't come to speak to those people that are having everything nice, that lie with their tongue and are able to maneuver their way in churches, in offices, among people. And so they are trouble free. I came to speak to somebody that is going through challenges. In this season, I don't care what package of challenge the enemy has prepared for you. God says he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Victory, according to the online dictionary, is an act of defeating an enemy or opponent in a battle. And so when I have come to talk about victory, I am talking about you being a overcomer over any battle that is raging against you in this season, in the mighty name of Jesus. And with what authority do I have to say this to you? Victory means success. Receive success in this season, in the name of Jesus. On the dictionary, victory means triumph. Do you know what triumph means? I'll give it to you. Just stay on with me. Victory means conquest. Victory means win. Put in your mind that you won, you are a winner, you are a conqueror on the day you became born again. It is not acceptable as a born again Christian for you 
to even have the audacity to have a mindset of defeat, to have an iota of doubt in the victory that God has pronounced upon you. This victory, according to Colossians chapter 2, Mount Catole Froyan Day, according to Colossians chapter 2, was given to you by Jesus Christ, who, according to Colossians 2, 14, 15, nails every power of Satan, every weapon of war of Satan, that and his demons of wicked men and women that they would use against you, he made them paralyzed. He had Jesus made Satan a paralytic. It is not me, it's a scripture. And Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to me, it doesn't matter the challenges that you are going through. You know something, people sometimes look at me and wonder. Because they would hear me going through big challenges in life. And they would see me cool, preaching on FB, singing, going to gym, beautiful, always shining. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to look at the battle I am going through and think that that battle is going to kill me? It is not possible because in my mind, it is written that Jesus Christ on the cross won every battle that I will ever, every sin, every challenge that will come today, tomorrow, yesterday. Jesus took care of all of them even before I was born. All I did was accept him as my Lord and Savior. And what happened? And what happened? I start to activate those victories. I start to activate it by pronouncing them in prayer, decreeing them in prayer, commanding their manifestation. And so if you ever heard me going through some battle, some, some, many people have been saying, hey, mama, you are strong. No, it's not because I'm strong. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Take Jesus away from me and you are left with an empty vessel. God gives us victory. There was one of my daughters too who was given over for death at the hospital. And she was telling me her testimony because she came home on Sunday. And she was giving me her testimony on Saturday. She said, Mama, they put me at where people die. And um, she's, uh, she's from Ivory Coast. She said, and uh, on the day that one doctor said he wants to try a second operation to see. Uh, because the husband called me and said, Mama, my molly is standando. And I said, no. Standando where? <coughs> Whoever brought him here, her here has the power to take her away. And since God has not pronounced that her time, because the Bible says that to us believers, we live 70 years and because of grace, we live 80 and above. And so, a 20-year-old or 30-year-old cannot be taken away like that. And she said when the, the, the doctors said they were going to have a last operation to see if uh, it would bring her back, she was lying down. She felt in her spirit that her husband should go to offer a sacrifice on the altar at church. So, the husband and the children went, offered a seed of sacrifice in money, and started weeping at the altar. While they were weeping at the altar, the medics took the woman to the operation room. And immediately they arrived at the operation room, there was a doctor there who said, what are you bringing the skeleton here to do? This woman is already gone. You want to operate her so that we will be charged with her death? No, we can't touch her. And the medic suddenly had interest in the woman's case because doctors didn't know what was wrong with her. Of course, because it was a spiritual battle, she was fighting. And this doctor started analyzing the woman and got to know that it was the medicine the doctors were giving her that was killing her. Cursed is he who leans on the arm of the flesh. Shensa, shensa, medicine, medicine. You lie in your room and your legs are outside. There was one of my daughters who was going to be operated. She gave me the list of all the doctors that were going to touch her. And this was a just a, an Italian that has just received Jesus as a Lord. And I said, how great is your faith? And she said, of course, because it's Jesus that has to touch my body. So the night before she was going to be operated, my husband said, let us pray a last prayer with her. Because we were believing God that she would not be touched by night. 
just because a prophetic word had come and said the same season that she was going to be operated, that is the season that her mother died. That is the season that her brother died. So it was a generational curse that was being programmed in the womb of time that was being activated. So I called and I said, God is telling me that what is you are going through is what killed your mother. She said, Evero. And I said, then, what is the date of death of your mother? She said, this day. And I said, and she said, even my brother died at the same day. But my mother was when I said, okay. So she called me and said, the doctors have given her another date. When we looked at the date, it was the same season that the devil takes people away from the family. But she said, it is also the day that my mother was born. And the spirit of the Lord said, she is going to be born afresh. I am going to give her life. Whatever God, the enemy prone, the, 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 the spirit of death that the enemy pronounced, God was going to overturn it. And it was last month when the prophetic word came. I think it was God was going to take away our garment of sorrow and give us a garment. So God promised this woman life. And the night before her operation, after we prayed with her, early in the morning, she calls me and she says, I had a dream about this, about this, about this. And I said, it is the spirit that the Holy Ghost came to operate on you and carry away. Because if the Holy Ghost had not come to take that demon out of you, you would have gone to be operated and you have died. But now, whoever sent that sickness to you, the Holy Ghost is taking it and taking it back to that person. It is someone that bought that sickness. Because many times what the enemy and adversary does is that when they want to hurt you, they go into your bloodline and seek for the iniquity that is in the bloodline. So if your mother had divorced, or um i don't want to mention evil things but if they suffered a kind of tragedy or it is a pattern that is in your bloodline what they do is that they go and buy that thing and so when it happens you will least never think that this is an enemy that has brought it to you you will think it is in my family the bible says it is called iniquity he says woe to those who go to search out iniquity this is what happened to david when the enemy was looking for him, he set out iniquity and he saw that adultery was one of the generational curses in his bloodline and he used it. So you will not see the enemy. His face will not come. Or you think, it, ah, I think I was at one place and I heard a, a man calling a friend on phone and he said, ah, they saw that I have diabetes. And the friend said, oh, I, I suppose, the friend said, what happened? And he said, oh, my mother has it. This man did not ever think that it is it could be an enemy who went to seek when you read the book of ezekiel chapter 21 21 he says the king of babylon is looking into the entrails of animals to see your future this month i have packed pack and packages of mysteries to bring to you but today the spirit of the lord just put on my heart to make it fixed in the hearts and minds of my listeners that they are victors and not victims i remember last week the spirit of the lord gave me a prophetic word for a woman one of my spiritual daughters and then the next day i said have you started praying with the scriptures i get you she said mom my defeat left god had made her a david in her family and there was an evil hand that was eaten the joy and blessing of the family. And the prophetic word was, who knows if God has appointed you, God caused you to be born again, so that out of your hand, your family will be delivered. And she said, me, me. And I said, okay, okay, this is the problem. This person thought she is the one that was going to fight that giant. No. If somebody told you it was the stones that killed Goliath, tell the person it is a lie. It is God's hands that took charge of David's hands. And as David wrote, David said, today the Lord will give you into my hand and I'm going to give your flesh to what? To the beds of the air and to the... David never said, I come against you with my stone. He said, you come against me. First Samuel chapter 17. You come against me with your shield and your stone. And I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel, whom you have defied. Kaboria Dalase. That is why it is dangerous for an enemy to touch me and touch you. Because if they touch me, if they touch you, they touch the apple of God's eye. 
because we are not working on our own. We are not fighting on our own. So when I talk about victory, I am not saying now you are going to fight the judge. You cannot. There are some deliverances I've been doing in the seasons and some demons that God shows me, that is when you understand that human beings are more poor without God. I was in a deliverance for a woman and the spirit of God Whilst I was praying, she had been given over to death. And I was, I was, I was rebooking the grave. That is what the spirit of the Lord said. He said, rebook the grave. Who are you to rebook the grave? Rebook death in the name of Jesus. And whilst I was rebooking the grave and death, a spirit came, the earth opened, and the spirit came out of the earth. You wouldn't need power. What are you going to do? Without the power of Christ, you, 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 are, you, are, an, you are just an orator for the enemy to smash and stamp. Once through the deliverance again, another spirit was invoked, and this was a big whale, a big fish with big eyes. Uh, 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 if the Lord should open your eyes to see what is fighting people, we will learn to be humble a little. Sometimes we, we behave as if, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, we, we behave as if we are super something. No! Thanks be unto God who gives us victory. It is God that gives you victory. And the same God that gives you victory has promised victory for me. Victory means to win, to have a successful outcome. You would have a successful outcome in your endeavor this season. It, to, to, <coughs> victory means a positive result. Whatever tests you have done, whatever exams you are waiting for, whatever documents you are waiting for, I prophesy that the results should be positive for you in the name of Jesus. Victory means favorable results. Victory means a landslide achievement. No competitor. In the name of Jesus. This is what the Bible defines as victory. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, scripture is saying that thank God. Where is it? The good God's word version. I thank God who always leads us in victory because of Christ. Wherever we go, wherever we go, wherever you go in this season, let victory be your portion. Let success be your portion. Win in the mighty name of Jesus. Win. Lift up your head. Let your head be lifted up. Win in the name of Jesus. Why so downcast? Oh, your soul, put your hope in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge Him because He has made you a winner in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. One of the verses says, Thanks be to God who always makes us participators of the victory of Jesus Christ. God gave Jesus Christ victory and He's made us participated of that victory it was victory over all the works of the devil and so in john 16 33 jesus says in this world you will have challenges but you see sometimes when some christians are going through challenges some people look at them and they they think they are the most worst sinners and they say if god is with you what i remember when my sister got sick some some someone was saying, if god is with you how can this then happen go and ask him paul Go and ask St. Paul if God is with him. Why he was he beaten several times to death? Jesus says in this world you will have challenges. You cannot talk about victory if you have not had challenges. And so this season is a season for us who have gone through years of battle, years of challenges. God says this is our season of rest. And when I'm talking about victory, the Bible talks about half victory, quarter victory, and total victory. This kind of victory is a total victory. Sometimes you have the money, as the proverb says. When you have the, he says, when you have a pan, you don't have food to cook. When you have food, you don't have a fan. It is half victory. When you have the money, but you can't buy what you need. When you have what you need, but you can't get what you want. It is half victory. This season is total victory. Can somebody say with me? The prophetic word is total victory. God leads us in triumphant procession. The victory is not a victory that happens in a corner. Silent that nobody hears. Triumph means, triumphant procession means um, on the 
on there, how do you call it? Some theologians say that this triumphant victory, and that is the same definition that is given on Google. When you talk about triumph, it is the same. It says, after a Roman soldier went to war and won, when he's coming home, a crowd sing his praise, shout his victory, and they lead him with horses, tambourines, they lead him through the city gate and he goes to kneel before the emperor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. He kneels before the emperor for a crown. And so the prophetic word is that there is a crown deposited with your name on it in this season. And that is what God has for you. And it is not a victory. It is, it is what is the English word? An uncontended for victory. It is a victory that no one can take from you. We have near through breakthrough. Sometimes it we nearly got it and it slips out of our hands. That season is past. In this season, I'm talking about victory, 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 victory. 36 minutes. In, in, in 15 minutes time, I'll be through with you. So God leads us in triumphant victory. God allows us to participate. This was the victory of Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus was hanging on the cross naked, it was not him that was naked. Read Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. It was Satan that had been stripped. It was a pantomime. Prophets are usually manifesting pantomimic prophecies. A pantomime is when a prophet goes through something to demonstrate what is happening to the enemy. <clears throat> like prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 20. He went naked through the streets. And that nakedness was to prophesy that the Egyptians, the Africans, were going to be carried away naked and slaves. So when Jesus hung naked on the cross, it was not him. Some people say if he's strong, why was he hanging naked on the cross? He was displaying the victory that he had won over Satan, stripping him of all his, the, 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 I think the message Bible says, he stripped all the spiritual tyrants and terrorists of their weapons of war. That is the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance is the weapon of victory that God is giving and putting into your hands in this season. Take your Bibles and let me take you to 1 Samuel chapter 13. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance. I said I wanted to read a few scriptures with you, but I will take you to 1 Samuel where we find the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And then I'll read a few scriptures of victory with you so that you it would imprint on your mind that your challenges do not defy the promises of God. <laughs> your challenges do not annul the promises of God. Last week after the administration, I think it was the Italian administration, an Italian woman wrote to me and said I should pray for her because she was expecting an answer. And immediately I read her mail. The Spirit of the Lord told me what was the woman's problem. And I said, God, this woman, I've not spoken to her before. I don't know her. She watched the tape. How do I go? With what audacity do I go to tell her this is her problem? And the Spirit of the Lord said, wherever there is a word, then I've prepared for a deliverance. So when the woman, uh, I made appointment with her to speak to her. I don't know if she's watching. And when she called, I said, please don't speak about whatever you wanted to tell me. Let me tell you what God says I should tell her. And I told her what God says I should tell her. And the woman started to cry. And I said, why? And then she said, you are saying that I'm going to give birth to twins. But the, the doctors have removed my womb. And they say I will never give birth. They have not only removed my womb. They have removed every estrogen, everything that would give me the capability of birth. Now say, God, how can you put me in trouble like this? I don't know this woman. You told me that the woman and the husband don't have their children on their own. They don't have their biological children. And I should tell her that she's going to give birth to twins. You didn't tell me this woman's womb has been removed. <laughs> say, God, can, why can you do that to me? But faith arose in me. And I said, lady, I never know you. And if God who knows you has prepared this cup of victory for you, drink it in the mighty name of Jesus. And she said, I was not even calling you for this because as for children, 
I know I can never have children. I was calling you because they they want to take away, they took away one of my breasts. They want to take another breast or something like that. And that is why I called. I said, ah, you see, because God had placed in store that she was going to bed, the enemy was angry and was going to even take away her breast. The breast that she was going to use to feed the children. Luca Rusi Falante. So I am trying to tell you that what you are going through will not defy what God has for you in this season. Who can annul what God has said? In this season, God says, I should pronounce victory upon you. And victory is your portion. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what doctors have told you. I don't care what challenges you have gone through. I don't care what anybody is telling you. I have come as a servant of the most high God to tell you, win. You are a winner. Victory. You have victory. You are a victor. Success is your portion. You would have success in your endeavors in the mighty name of Jesus in this season. First Kings, sorry, Second Kings chapter 13. Second Kings chapter 13. Second Kings chapter 13. Verses 14 through 19. Hear the word of the Lord. He says, Where am I? Okay, verses 14 to 19. He says, Now, Elisha, anytime you see Elisha, you should expect a double portion of anointing. When people raise one person that is dead, Elisha will raise double. So, Elisha is a prophetic word for this season which calls for a double victory, a double anointing, fresh oil, double, double, double for your trouble, double for everything you have lost, double for your sorrows. The day that God showed me that we had victory, we have victory in this season, that next day, you know what I saw? I saw weeping, mourning, and I said, God, didn't you tell me that it is a season of victory? And he said, I said, the arrow of the Lord's victory. This have to let you understand that the enemy also has his arrows, and he has prepared the arrows of sorrow. And that is why you must confess the arrow of the, that is why I have come in this season to prophesy victory, because the enemy is planning defeat for my people, but victory shall be their portion. And so when you see Elisha, it talks about victory. And Elisha was suffering from the illness from which he died. Jehoash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him and said, My father, my father. The prophet was calling, the king was calling the prophet, my father. Those of you who don't respect prophets and men of God, because of a small position God has given you, you toss pastors, hey, come here. Yes, that is what some people do to pastors. Because they feed the pastor, give him little food to eat. I remember I had a minister. God had ordained me to do something. And because this minister was feeding, God was using her to um, uh, support the ministry. She now shifted position and was going to tell me what I had to do. And no, you don't tell me. It is God. I am the leader. And the leadership role carries a leadership anointing. And if you are not careful and God has not put you there, you put yourself there. You are going to suffer like Uriah. When David wanted to kill Uriah, Uriah was a commander. He was a soldier, but he was not a frontliner. He had not the anointing. He didn't have the anointing to go on the front line to lead. So when David wanted to kill Uriah, even though he was a mighty warrior, David put him on the front line and he died. And this one wanted to tell me what I have to do. No. The king called the prophet, my father, my father. I remember one Italian politician. She took me to the second June Italian program. And then she introduced me to the bishop of Brescia. I'm not talking of the African bishops that are, are bishops in the African community. I'm talking about the ecclesiastical position of being a bishop of a city. That is another territory altogether. When somebody is made, the Catholic Church made someone a bishop of a territory in the realms of the spirit, he is the watcher over the city. Now, when he introduced me to the bishop, the bishop had his adjutant, a deacon, a very famous priest. 
Catholic priest. And the priest, the, 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 um, the counselor, the politician introduced me to the bishop and said, this is the woman that has been teaching me the Bible. And that is how I was awarded with um, an award at the Brescia University. It was not because I've gone, I don't know what I've done. I was awarded because of my express uh, deliverance of the word of God, <laughs> which comes from the spirit of God. <laughs> so she said, this is a woman that has been teaching me the scripture. Do you know what the bishop said? She said, ah, so she's your spiritual mother. Did you see? These people are deep in the realms of the spirit. And she said, so she's your spiritual. Though this woman is a politician who is physically is higher in society than me. The bishop was able to recognize that because I feed her the word of God, I am her spiritual mother. And so the prophet, thank you so much. Thank you. This is encouraging. It takes the Holy Ghost to deliver exactly what God, because man has so much in their heart. I have so much in my heart to share, but the Holy Ghost should help me to deliver what he wants you to hear. He wants us to hear in this season. Thank you so much for your encouragement. So the king calls the prophet, my father, my father, when he was in danger, when he was in danger, he went to the prophet, the prophet of God. Why? To hear the word of God. When you are in danger, where do you go? Do you call your friends? Last week, I needed a help so much and someone I know came on my mind. He's, he's a person I knew when I was young. And so uh, I, I felt, I said, well, maybe this one can help me because maybe God is the one putting him on my mind. And I called this person. Come and see the voice of this person. So seductive. And I said, mm -mm. no, I will wait on God. I will wait for God to do it in his own time for me. Hello. <laughs> and I said, wait, my papa. Wait, my papa. Can this anointing be exchanged for a foolish thing like a one night stand? Lie, lie. When your papa, I will wait on God. Who do you run to when you are in hell? We are human beings and sometimes we think God is the one that is telling us to ask that person for help. I say God is raising your helpers for you. And they will come without you having to exchange hello, <laughs> exchange anything. In the name of Jesus, I run to the rock, the solid rock. Where do you run to when you have problems? Do you run to people who tell you, I told you, it's your fault. Too. I told you, you should have listened to me. Yeah, now you have to carry it. Up. No, I prefer to go naked before Jesus. And say to him, I cried unto the Lord and he heard my cry and he lifted me from the miry clay and he set my feet on a rock to stay. I go to the rock. Where do you go to? The king went to the prophet. We live in times that people are rushed to go through to prophets. I am not talking about that. You must know God. I want to talk about prophet. The Bible says that the word of God is prophecy. I am talking about either seeking a true prophet of God or going to the word of God to see what God has for you. Go naked before God and ask him, where from this God? Where from this? Last, I think last month I suffered um, what apparently looked like a defeat and my heart was broken and I was walking through the street and I, I didn't even know when cars were passing and were not passing. And I said, God, where from this? And he said, I told you, you didn't listen to me. Let God be true and every man a liar. And I said, but God, you know. And he said, well, I told you. Listen to me. If you want total victory, if you want to enjoy total victory. I was, I was, I was hiring, looking for a house. And this house I saw was so, so beautiful. But the night we went to do the Sopra Law Ghost, we went to look at the house. My spirit was agitated and I didn't sleep all the night. So the next day, my husband said, Annie, should I send in the money for the house? And I said, yes. One, you say, mama, you're a person. Yes, I'm a person, but I'm a human being too. I like the house. So when my spirit was agitated, I said, well, since God has not been specific to say it, then I'll pray it through and go and take the house. So I made my husband send the money. 
And after we were told that because of one or two things, one, our money cannot be given and our house too, we will not get it. I mean, the shame that they, that they didn't pay me. But who caused them? Now me caused them. God has planned victory for me. I just have to wait for his timing. And this is the season. I didn't know that in September he was coming to prophesy victory. This is his timing. This is his season. Isn't this the season that I'm launching a new book? Whoever thought what the enemy used to, he wanted to use to kill me, the same would be used as a raccount in a book that is going to lift up other ministers, other people that are going through challenges, whom people want to silence. Because that is what they said. They said they will silence me. But no. God had not purposed it. God had purposed that through that experience, I will come out with this book titled Tabitha Kumi. Tabitha, arise. Everyone that is dying, this book is for you. That is why you cannot miss the book launch at Melan at the King's Restoration Ministries in Yasarka, number seven. I'm expecting many of you that would come. I'm expecting because there's going to be an unusual anointed. You have to hear testimonies. There are so many people that God connected to me that their destinies have been turned in a twinkle of a second. I remember at the, on the day of my consecration, the Lord said, you are not going to be consecrated alone. As I raise you up, you are going to raise other women up. And I said, God, how am I going to do it? He said, you're going to have an award. And the award is going to be called a next lady. All ministers that are, have been denied recognition on that day. As you give them that award, a fresh oil will come on them and they are going to be recognized. That is what has happened in the city of Russia. All of them have been recognized. All of them are now women of God doing mighty things for God. And so I don't rise alone. The Bible says, unless a seed of corn falls to the ground, oh, don't let me start my preaching. The preaching, it's a conference and a book lunch. Unless the seed falls to the eye, I have fallen to the ground. I told you, last year, July, doctors gave me over to die. They didn't know what was wrong with me. At a point, one doctor even gave me depression tablets. Now I looked at her face, crumpled the paper, and gave it to him. And I told my husband, let's get up and go. And as I was crying on God and saying, God, is it the time for you to take me away? You didn't give me. I know that... The, the life you have given me. I know the years you have given me. Why have you changed your calendar? And God said, and I will lay a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And I went to preach at Greenland Ministries. This is a testimony. They know it. I've never shared it before. And I don't know why I'm sharing it now. Whilst I was preaching, the Holy Ghost hit. I was talking about rise up, rise up, rise up. If you have fallen, rise up. If you... The Holy Ghost hits me, boom, and I fell to the ground. The, uh, the pastors were coming to pick me, and the Holy Ghost said, let no one touch you. Even Greenland Ministries, ministers don't even know the testimony I'm sharing with you here. They didn't know when I accepted that invitation, I had been given a death warrant. They didn't know when I accepted the invitation, I was going through the valley of the shadow of death. And when the Holy Ghost picked me up, I had become a... Every pain that I was going through, every burning sense, every horrible nightmare I was going through, <laughs> vanished. The power of the Lord hits me because of my obedience to go and minister. How would I have known? I could have told this woman, look, I am in this situation, so I cannot come. No. God specifically said, accept the invitation. He didn't tell me, if you go, I'm going to heal you. So we don't know the ways that God gives us victory, we only have to accept. So the king, according to scripture, runs to the prophet and says, my father, my father, he cried. The chariot and the horsemen of Israel. Verse 15 says, Elijah said, get bow. Six minutes and we are through. Get bow and arrow. And the king did it. The prophetic word for this season is get your bows, get your arrow. In the Old Testament, arrows were weapons of war. This was a king whom another people, another king had raised a battle against them. And the prophet of God said, Don't sit down like a Cornelio, don't sit down like a Codardo, don't sit down trembling. 
Don't sit down with your tails in between your legs. Rise up and take bow and arrow. I have come as a servant of God to tell you, rise up and take bow and arrow. Don't allow that situation to swallow you up. Don't allow that liar to swallow you up. Don't allow them to take away your husband. Don't allow them to take away your children. Rise up. Take bow and arrow. Rise up. Rise up because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Rise up because you have been given victory 2,000 years ago. Rise up. Let the spirit of the warrior rise up in you. Let the spirit of faith rise up in you. Let the spirit of supplication rise up in you. Katole Frodian day. And the prophet tells the king, rise up, get a bow, get some arrows. And the king did it. I'm telling you, some people will not do what I'm saying. But the king did it. You have no choice. When you are faith, you see, one of the weakest people, the fragile people, are people who are in difficulty. They would accept anything for them to be free. I remember one man took his pay and gave all to a stranger in the street. I was with because we have a ministry for the clochard. So I was with the clochard. The man opened all his pass and gave, gave all the money to the clochard. I said, why are you doing that? And he said, I am desperate for God's help. People who are in trouble are always desperate for help. And if you find yourself desperate for help, I have been through that desperation. A year ago, I was desperate for healing. I have seen God's hand in my crusades, in my ministration, where even I don't go to do deliverance and uh, uh, God begins to deliver people like that. I have seen the power of God. I have seen God's mighty hand with me in my ministry. And I didn't know why God would not answer me. Not knowing God was preparing me to write a book. And he was using that experience to give me a lesson. When you are in trouble, where do you run to? If you find yourself desperate, then I've come to tell you, take bow, take arrow. And when the king had taken the bow and arrow, the prophet put his hands on the king's hands. Did you see what I said? It is symbolic of you are not the one that is going to do anything. The Bible says in Psalm 44, the people of Ephraim carried bows and arrows, yet came back defeated because the Lord was not with them. So if I say take bow and arrow, I'm not saying go to the supermarket to buy a bow or pistol, a sword, a stone, a stick, and go around beating your enemies. The arrow in the realms of the spirit, according to Ephesians chapter 6, is what? Is your faith. The arrows in the book of Proverbs is symbolic of your words. The arrows in the book of Psalm 76 is symbolic of your prayer. The tongue is symbolic of arrow. The tongue of the wicked is called a sharp arrow that is bent to kill. The Lord is saying, take your scripture, that is the bow. Take the arrow, confess it. And what confession are you going to make in this season? Take the bow, take the arrow. And the prophet put his hands on the king's hands and as i lay as you have taken bow and arrow i lay my hands on your hands let the hand of the lord come upon you have you read the scripture he says and the hand of the lord came upon the prophet elijah and he outran ahab you are going to outrun every ahab that has run before you in this season because the hand of the lord is coming upon you the hand of the lord is symbolic of power the hand of the lord is symbolic of victory the hand of the lord is symbolic of strength Receive it in the name of Jesus. And the prophet said, after the prophet had put his hands on the king's hands, he said, open the east window. What does it mean to open the east window? The east were where the enemies were coming from. Because he says, the Arameans were the ones that had raised a battle against um, Israel, against King Joash. And the Arameans, the, main, the name Aram, Arameans are Syrians. They were experts in war. Experts using the arrows. The Aramean means a height. It means everything that has exalted itself above the promises of God in your life. 
It is an Aramean. These were people from the east. That is why the prophet told him, shoot. The prophet is trying to tell us that some believers are praying and their prayers are not shooting at anything because they are praying aimlessly. The Bible says like a madman that throws fire brands. So it's a foolish man that talks and says, uh, I didn't know I was going to hurt you. In the book of Corinthians chapter 9, Paul says he's not a blind boxer. He doesn't pray aimlessly. Scripture is telling us some people pray aimlessly and they are not able to get their target. The prophet was teaching the king how to pray strategic prayer and not to miss the enemy. In this season, if you are going to enjoy that victory that Jesus is giving you, then you have to follow directions. You have to follow the rules of engagement. You have to learn the strategic prayer that God is giving. God is the strategic warrior, I'm telling you. <clears throat> you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 21. He wakes the prophet Ezekiel up and he says, wake up. The king of Babylon is shaking his arrows. He's invoking his household idols. And he's looking through the, um, the intestines of animals. He's looking to see the destiny that I have for Israel. And what he's doing is that after he sees Israel's destiny, he's going to use witchcraft and divination to turn and spoil Israel's destiny. In fact, he's shaking his arrows to invoke the gods to bring massacre, help him to bring massacre on the land of Israel. This is God. The enemy is a strategic warrior. And so he does not fight aimlessly. And therefore, if you are a believer, you cannot afford to pray aimlessly. Ah, oh, oh, Father who art in heaven. Mm. Ah, hello, Peter. No, 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 no. You cannot afford. In time of emergency, you cannot afford. You will be a casualty. I have seen casualties in the kingdom of God. And this is not a season you want to be a casualty. So take bow. Take arrow. Open the east window to rust. The spiritual meaning of the East, according to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6, he says, you have copied the traditions of the people of the East and brought witchcraft, idolatry, divination into the land of Israel. So the East is symbolic of witchcraft, divination, adultery. Whatever witchcraft, divination, idolatry, magic power, sorcery, satanic invocation that is being opened against you to swallow up your victory. God says, open the east window and shoot. What is the east again? The east is symbolic of when the sun is rising. What is the symbolic of the sun rising? It is morning. So open the east window and shoot me. Rise up at dawn and raise up a cry for the manifestation of God's deliverance. For you and your house. Open the east window and shoot. Means rise up early in the morning. And open your mouth and declare the Lord's victory that he has promised for you in the name of Jesus. So the prophet tells the king, open the east window. And he opened it and he said, shoot. Elisha and the prophet shot. And the, pro and the king shot. And the prophet said, the arrow of the Lord's victory. The arrow of victory over Aram. When you rise in the morning, in this month of September, you have one confession to make. You have an obligation to wake up at dawn. You have an obligation to rise in the morning. You have an obligation to make a confession. And this is your confession. I shoot the arrows of the Lord's deliverance. I shoot it over. Whatever problem you are going through, it is your Amram. Whatever height that I exalted itself against you, it is your armor. I shoot it against high blood pressure. I shoot it against diabetes. I shoot it against the court case. I shoot it to bring my children back home. I shoot it against the spirit of sterility. I shoot it against every weapon of harassment, intimidation that the enemy is bringing against my home. I shoot it against it. Let it swallow them in victory. That is our prayer. It is one hour. I have to close. We will continue next week. I'm closing with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54 to 57. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 15. No, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54 to 57. I'm closing again with a prophetic confession of victory. 
It says from verse 54, when the perishable has clothed the imperishable, let the imperishable clothe every perishable situation you're going through. And the mortal with immortality, then the saying written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. The arrow of the Lord's deliverance swallows up the arrow of death. Death is an arrow. When you read Jeremiah, God says, and I will kill them with the arrows of famine, destruction, and death. So famine is an arrow. Destruction is an arrow. Death is an arrow. But the arrow of God, like the serpent of Moses, swallows up every arrow of the enemy. So that is your confession. You rise up in the morning, you'll say, I call for the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. The Lord's deliverance over every height that has exalted itself against the promises of God for my life. Let the arrow of God swallow them in victory. Let the arrow of the Lord swallow them in victory. Let it swallow sickness in victory. Let it swallow loss in victory. Let it swallow magic in victory. Let it swallow divination in victory. Let it swallow sorcery in victory. Let it swallow every weapon of the enemy in victory. In the name of Jesus. Let's make one prayer and then I'll leave you. Psalm 76. Psalm 76 verse, I think verse 3. You make one prayer and you are going to wage a good warfare with this and share your testimony with me about the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Psalm 76. It says, verse 3 says, I'm starting from verse 1. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. The name of the Lord will be great in your life. It will be manifested in your life. When they had supposed to sit down and glee over your defeat, they are going to bite their tongue. And their last words are going to remain at the edge of their mouth. And they were, are going to say, ah, but, but what? God prophesied victory for his children. How dare you prophesy defeat over them? God is known in Judah. Judah means praise. God will be known in your praise. You will have a testimony this season. His name is great in Israel. Oh God of Israel, let your name be great in our midst. Let our enemies not mock us. Give us a song of victory. And Lord, that song of victory, swallow the song of the, of the tyrant in the name of Jesus. Listen to what verse 3 says. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, and the sword, and the weapons of war. And God break every flashing arrow of death, of lust, of destruction, of disease, of famine, of harm. May the arrow of the Lord's deliverance be manifested to swallow up every way. Did you see it? He called it the weapons of war of the enemy. The enemy also has arrows. He has shields. He has swords. He went against David with the shield and the sword. And in Psalm 46, verse 9, Psalm 46, verse 9, he says, Psalm 46, verse 9 says, God makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow. He shatters the spear. Say it with me. Oh God, command every war raging against me to cease. Break the, the bows of the enemy. Shatter the spears of the enemy. Bend their shields with fire in the name of Jesus. The verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I have come to pronounce victory upon you. This is a season of victory for us according to the word of the Lord. Take bow. Take arrow. Open the east window and shoot. I'll be back with you next week. And then don't forget about my book launch, spread the good news, and then see you at Milan on the 23rd of September. You don't want to miss it. It's a Saturday morning. The time is 11 p.m. Don't miss out. Come and taste of the victory of Jesus Christ for his church. Amen. Bless you. Whoever took time to watch, the word of the Lord will not fail. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Shalom. Shalom.